Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. Today we are going to work on a strap project and we are also going to talk about the bandsaw and why you need to have a bandsaw if you're going to build guitars. So I got a really nice one-piece body blank from our friends at Guitar Wood Experts. Dan hooked me up with this and uh, I have drawn a center line on it, but that's all I have done. So I am going to get my Strat template. This one came from guitar template or guitarbuildingtemplates.com. The dudes over there are really cool. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to get as much of this straight grain stuff in the top as I could because all this is going to get covered up by pick guards. So I'm not going to sweat that. So I'm going to go ahead and lay the strat out so that I get um, the uh, you know the center line isn't really that critical on a one piece body, but um, uh, but I think it's a good, a good habit to be into. So, and you can lay this out however you want and you don't have to have a one piece body blank either. Uh, you could have a two piece or a three piece or a several more pieces than that. So I got my body blank drawn on here. Um, since this is going to be a bandsaw intensive um, video, I thought I would show you guys some of the things that we do at class that I do for everybody. I usually have them um, uh, kind of test the waters with the bandsaw before they jump in with a piece of, um, of wood, especially something this nice from, uh, like I said, from Dan. So I usually draw some test pieces. This is for class. I don't do this every time I build a strat. But, um, We've got, um, and I'll show you guys how we do this. We've got a straight line here. If you can't cut a straight line, what makes you think you can cut a curved line? I've got a convex cut right here and a concave cut right here. So in this video, we're going to start by doing all three of these cuts and just practice before we jump into the strap. Okay, let's go over to the bandsaw and fire it up. Okay, I got my bandsaw set up. I've got my saw, um, my blade guard down about as low as it can go. People give me shit about this all the time because I run the blade guard way up and they're like, oh my god, lower the blade guard. Um, uh, <laughs> it's really more for stability than protecting the blade from going all cattywampus if it breaks. If you've ever had a bandsaw blade break, just the whole thing just stops because it loses tension. Now someone's going to go, I remember a time when that happened and the blade kept... Fine. It's never happened to me and I've broken more bandsaw blades than all of you guys put together probably so um, anyway let's just go ahead and jump in Chris is grimacing behind the camera we're gonna start with this straight cut let's do it first So that's a pretty good cut. I kept my saw on this side of the pencil line all the way through. And um, if you can cut a straight line, I think it's a good time to worry about cutting a curved line. You'll notice that my hand stayed on the bandsaw here. If there was anything that shoved the piece through the blade faster, my hand would have been stopped by the saw. That is a good thing to do. If you keep your hand out of the blade path, you cannot get cut. See where my palm is right here? That looks pretty good. Let's do the concave one now. And I'm going to stay on this side of the line, or I'm going to try to.
saw blade wind all the way down before I go putting my hand anywhere near the blade to scooch pieces away from, from the, the cutting surface. So the blade is all the way stopped, now I can grab these pieces and shove them out of the way. Alright, so all of our test cuts look pretty good. Um, by the way, I'm using a 3 8 blade. This is a, a Starrett blade. This is the one I use and this is, I think it's a skip tooth. Yep, it's a skip tooth blade. You can look up on the internet what that actually means, but you can see here, the regular blade has all the blade uh, points. The skip one skips a couple of them, and the hook has kind of a, well, it's got a hook thing. Look it up on the internet. There's lots and lots and lots of people who can tell you how to do that. All right, so let's go ahead and cut this out. Um, we're gonna try to get as close to the line as we possibly can, because that's gonna mean that we have to sand a lot less. But I don't wanna cross my line and go into the body. That would be bad. All right, let's do it. Well, I'm sure George Fullerton's dad could have done a better job than I did, but I feel really good about this. We got real, real close to the line. We never crossed over the line. So um, the next step on this guitar, we can sand or we can <laughs> sand. You know we're not going to sand it, but um, we can get all that stuff going. But this guitar is looking very, very cool. So guys, if you don't have a bandsaw, you need to get one if you want to get serious about building guitars. As a matter of fact, I would say that's one of the first tools you ought to have. Um, get the most powerful bandsaw you can get, get the biggest bandsaw you can get, and uh, you will never ever be disappointed. Um, the bandsaw is a very accurate tool, even though it, you, can, you can do nice you know, curves and corners and, and, and radiuses with it. Um, you can do a lot of really, really good work with it too, a lot of very accurate cuts. Um, it's not as dangerous as the table saw because the blade only goes through one direction and then it comes out of the piece the other, the, on the, in this protected guard over here. So the blade only goes down, unlike a table saw it doesn't go down and then back up again through the piece. So kickbacks are non-existent on a bandsaw. So um, yeah, if you've been like, Hmm, I wonder if I should get a bandsaw. Well, according to Matt at Texas Toast Guitars, you absolutely should have a bandsaw. So, um, guys, if you have any questions about what we did in this video, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like this kind of stuff, give me the thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed yet, why don't you go ahead and click that subscribe button? It's free and it's fun and we're always doing cool stuff like this. If you appreciate what I do, you might want to go over to our Patreon page and consider becoming a member. Even a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring you guys neat stuff like this. But if you can't do Patreon, we totally get it. Just share the video as many places as you can think of and help us grow the channel that way. So, until next time, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, start your own YouTube channel. That's what I did. Thanks for watching, you guys. We'll see you next time. I